Cake. Death. Class A drugs. What did two out of the three of these have in common? Exactly, danger to the body. So today we're gonna remedy this by making the odd one out, cake. My favorite cake though, a sheet cake, or a Texas sheet cake if you're Texan enough to wanna call it that. This is my favorite cake by far, and it's what I eat on my birthday every year. So for this, we're gonna refer back to the holy text. And just to be transparent, baking is a sheet of ice that I tread extremely lightly on because it's so easy to mess up. But lucky for you and me, the sub cake recipe is so hard to mess up that it barely classifies as baking. Unlike some other recipes, I actually recommend you make this one at home, so I'm gonna put the exact ingredients in the description and you can follow along with this video. Now to start, we're gonna put some flour and sugar in a bowl that fits your masculine and hulking 6 foot 3, 230 pound body and supports your ox-like hands. The recipe says to sift the flour and sugar, but sifting does nothing in the face of just whisking the ingredients together. Really, just look at how smooth that is. It's at this point that you'll remember to turn your oven on 375 Fahrenheit. I did 400 because I'm impatient and I watched one episode of MasterChef Junior when I was 15. Next you want to get a pan out, toss some milk pulp in there and melt it down all good. Then you want to create a homunculus decoction by putting vegetable oil in the melted butter. Let that cook until the solids start to separate from the liquid and put in your cocoa powder. I'm feeling too cool for school today so I'm measuring it in my chicken soup cup to dump in all at once. At this point you want to cook the cocoa in the fat for a couple minutes. You can refer back to Adam Ragusi's video as to why, but essentially cooking cocoa in fat for a minute or two amplifies the chocolate flavor in some subtle ways, but it's not necessary. Nobody really cares about the cake part since it's just a delivery mechanism for the icing. But if you watched MasterChef Junior as a kid, just let it cook for another two minutes. After that, toss in some water and bring it to a boil. Once that's done, bring it over to the flour mixture and since this doesn't have egg in it, you can just use a whisk and beat. We want the cake part to be more like a brownie, so really don't be afraid to get it all mixy. I beat it a little bit too much and it rose in the oven, but we'll get how to fix that in a minute. At this point, you want to toss that bowl aside and get another one, or just do it in the same bowl as before. I'm just a little bit extra in like organization, so I'm using the second one. If you're using the same bowl though, keep in mind that we're about to put eggs in it, so you want the mixture to cool off before you put the stuff in there. Otherwise, you'll be eating scrambled eggs in your cake, and that's gross. Anyway, pour some milk in there. Oh, hey there, buddy. Hello. We're gonna make this quick so he doesn't feel any pain. Yeah, then two more. I'm deferring from the scriptures on this one and putting in a scoop of sour cream with a little bit less milk. I've always made sheet cakes this way and I think it gives the cake a bit better texture. It's not really noticeable though. Then put a very careful bit of grandma's ashes in there, or as it's known in the mainstream, baking soda, and a little less careful pour of vanilla extract, and then beat. Beat until smooth though. This will be harder with the sour cream in there, but it'll mix eventually. Then you want to pour that into the first mixture and get those all mixy. Notice how it's bubbling. It's pretty neat because that's how the cake is going to rise in the oven. Then just get a pan that the batter fits into. But remember, this is a sheet cake, so you're going to want to use a sheet. Are you bearing with me here? Then you want to grease down the sheet like Mac greases down beef cakes. Everybody grab some grease. Why? Because we're going to grease up these beef cakes. Pour it in and bake. 20 to 25 minutes will do. Now you want to start pimping for the second time in this channel, in fact. Ranch on carrots, hummus on cucumber, dip on chips. The only thing people care about is the ranch hummus dip, and in this case, icing. Get that same pan out from earlier because you clean while you cook, right? Perfect. We'll toss that pan on the stove again. You want some more milk pulp in different colors this time because I ran out of the same brand. Melt it down just like with the cake part and toss in some more cocaine powder. Then for a second time, you're going to let that cook for a minute, and you're going to want to whisk for this part because you're going to activate your forearm a little bit. Toss in a little milk for no reason, but you're the party maniac so you do what you want, and keep it at the ready for texture diagnosis later. Then whip out your powdered sugar. It's at this point that I'm just going to let Jesus take the wheel and not measure it. You just want to put it in until you like the texture and flavor essentially. Keep in mind, this will guzzle down a lot of powdered sugar, I'd say a minimum of 3 cups at the least. But from that point on, just add till you want to stop. And if it gets too thick or tastes too chocolatey, toss in some milk. Ain't no harm done there, partner. Oh my god, what's wrong with me? Then check your cake in a very unnoticeable way because you're a professional videographer. You'll notice that there are little clumps of powdered sugar in the icing. That's why we have it on the heat. Turn it up a little and whisk pretty fast until the clumps are gone. Look at that fat badonka right there. Jiminy crickets. Well, guess what? We don't care about the cake, so I'm gonna smash that down with a plate. We want it to be dense anyway, so why not help it out? And this is the result of whisking too much air in earlier, and maybe putting a little bit too much of grandma's ashes- <coughs> Baking soda in there. Now look at that sucker. You can ride these babies for miles. Then grab your icing that's been staying warm on low heat and pour over. 
Mine was a little too thick, so it needed a little help spreading, which I'm happy to oblige it to. But thick is my middle name, and I want another comrade with my own characteristics, so we'll keep it as is. But the thickness will also make the most important part of the cake, the shell. Notice how in the pan the icing is crusting up? Well, <laughs> that's the maker and breaker right there. You can totally eat it now, but its final form is the next day after it sat out all night. And look at that. Now here's why I wanted the icing extra thick. I'm gonna show you with the standardized punch test. It barely moved. The cake did not falter in the face of the icing. And notice how the icing didn't bend as much as it did crumble. This is what you want your cake to be, crunchy on top while fudgy on the bottom. And since you already desecrated the slice of cake with your knuckle oil, you might as well take out your frustrations of your last math test and make some arts and crafts, perhaps some cake pops, or any other phallic object that you'd like to make. Dude, why are you still here? I mean, while you are, you might as well go down and press that big red button. No!